I'm speaking with Omar Barghouti, a key leader in the boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement for Palestinian rights, who has recently been announced as co-winner, along with Ralph Nader, of the Gandhi Peace Award. He's presently in Acre, a city along the Mediterranean in Palestine, Israel. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, first off, let me congratulate you on winning the Gandhi Peace Award. It's well-deserved. Uh, thank you so much for awarding me uh, with Ralph Nader. I'm, I'm very honored. Now, there's been some uh, interesting news concerning your ability to travel. Could you explain? Uh, yes. Um, since April, uh, the Israeli Ministry of Interior decided to impose a travel, an effective travel ban on me by refusing to renew my travel, Israeli travel document, without which I cannot leave the country and return to it as I'm a Jordanian citizen with permanent residence in Israel. Uh, following that, there was an international outcry, and several key human rights organizations, including Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, uh, um, the International Federation for Human Rights, and many, many, many others, members of the European Parliament, even European governments, such as the Irish government, raised uh, serious concerns uh, about this travel ban as an undemocratic uh, move by Israel to punish me for my human rights activism uh, to achieve Palestinian freedom, justice, and equality. Uh, following that, and after my lawyer discovered uh, some uh, um, technical uh, deficiencies in the state prosecutor's case, uh, she presented the data to the judge, and in a court uh, uh, last month, 19th of July, it was decided that they will temporarily suspend the travel ban for two months, uh, and in the meanwhile work to fill the deficiencies. Mm -hmm. Now, what is their supposed reason for denying you the right to travel? Are you appealing a prison sentence or something like that? Uh, no, their official reason is their claim that the center of my life is not in Israel, but in Ramallah, in the occupied Palestinian territory. Uh, and this is according to a policy that they use against Palestinians in occupied East Jerusalem to, to strip them of their permanent residency status and to strip them of any benefits and, and human rights. Uh, because they, if any Jerusalemite Palestinian, uh, let's say, rents an apartment in Ramallah or stays there for a number of days per week, they can use that against him or her and deny them their per Israeli permanent residency. So they're trying to use the same regulation against me. But as a spokeswoman for the Minister of Interior told Agence France Press, the French uh, uh, news agency, when they imposed an effective travel ban on me, uh, she admitted that my BDS activism, my, my human rights activism in the boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement for Palestinian rights was also a factor in the decision by the Ministry of Interior. Mm -hmm. well, now, where, where is your family from in Palestine? My family from my father's side comes from a village called Deir Ghassani, uh, near Ramallah. Um, part of my mother's family comes from Safat in present-day Israel. Um, so we come from various places, and, but we're a family of refugees uh, from the 1948 uh, uh, expulsion of most Palestinians, as well as from the 1967 occupation and expulsion. So you're from a family of refugees. Could I ask where you were born? I was born in Qatar, um, in the Persian Arabian Gulf. Mm -hmm. uh, and I grew up in Egypt where I finished high school, and then I went to New York for college. I went to Columbia University where I studied uh, BS and MS in engineering, electrical engineering specifically, and I worked in New York for six to seven years, um, and then I, I came home. Mm -hmm. And you've lived in Acre for, uh, I think you said, 22 years? 22 years, correct, with my wife, who is from Acre. Mm -hmm. her, her family comes from Acre. Can I ask you about uh, New York? What, what did you think of our country, uh, the, the culture? Are there aspects uh, that you remember fondly, or uh, baseball, or uh, music, or whatever? Uh, well, certainly not baseball, no. <laughs> but, uh, of course, uh, there are many things to like. <laughs> many things to like about New York. 
and many things to like less. Uh, I did grow up in Egypt, so when I went to New York, I did not face a cultural shock. It was as big, as dirty, as messy, as crowded, um, um, uh, and it had a big cultural life, so did Cairo. Um, so I did not experience any cultural shock, really, uh, in, in any sense of the term. But, of course, uh, I did go to a very competitive school, which presented a challenge. Mm-hmm. What decade were you in the United States when you had your I'm education? Sorry, I, I, I could not hear you, Sam. What uh, decade, what years were you in the United States getting your college oh, education? I, I was in the U.S. The, um, I went in 1982, uh, right after I finished high school in Egypt. I went to Columbia uh, to a school of engineering. Uh, I graduated with a master's in 87, and I worked uh, for a, a telecommunications company called Ninex, a large <laughs> telecommunications company, till 1993. Mm. I remember those years. You must, eleven years. You must have been depressed about the knowledge in the U.S. about Palestine. Oh yes, at the time when I went to Colombia, calling for an end to the Israeli occupation was considered a very radical statement that could cause you a lot of trouble. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, um, let's so talk. We've come about... a long way now with BDS flourishing even at Colombia. Yes. Let's talk about BDS. Uh, for the few of our listeners who don't know about it, could you briefly explain what it is and what are the goals of the groups you sure. work with on BDS? Sure. The, the Boycott, Divestment, and Sanctions, or BDS uh, movement, was established by the absolute majority of entities in Palestinian society, political parties, trade unions, women's unions, writers, academics, associations, professional associations and, and students and youth, uh, refugees, and so on and so forth. Uh, and it's, um, it, it stems uh, or it's rooted in a very long heritage of Palestinian popular nonviolent resistance. Uh, this it was not certainly the first instance where Palestinians have adopted the boycott uh, to, to uh, resist Israel's regime of occupation, settler colonialism, and apartheid, as we've done so uh, throughout our history of resistance to settler colonialism. But in 2005, um, this uh, immense sum of Palestinian entities, political, social, uh, and other entities, came together and issued a historic call for boycott divestment and sanctions against Israel's regime of oppression to bring about Palestinian rights. Basically, BDS calls for an end to the 1967 occupation, including Israel's illegal wall, colonies, and so on, uh, to an end to Israel's discrimination, which is systematic, legalized, and entrenched, and amounts to apartheid, so full equality for Palestinian citizens of the state of Israel, and third, and most importantly, the right of Palestinian refugees to return to their homes of origin, from which they were expelled in the 1948 Nakba, the systematic ethnic cleansing of the indigenous Palestinian, and ever since. The reason why BDS focuses on all three rights, not just an end to the 1967 occupation, is because the Palestinian people are not just those living in Gaza and the West Bank, including in Jerusalem. Palestinians are divided roughly into three main constituencies. Those of us in the West Bank and Gaza are only 38% of the entire Palestinian people. Those of us in present-day Israel who are citizens of the state of Israel are 12%, and those of us who are refugees or living in exile and, and denied the right to go home simply because they're the wrong type are 50, 50%. And so as a human rights movement, we focus on all three rights to achieve our freedom, justice, and equality. BDS is very much inspired by the South African anti-apartheid boycott as well as boycotts used by the U.S. Uh, civil rights movement, Martin Luther King, Rosa Parks, uh, and, and so on. And today it's a global movement that is led by the largest coalition in Palestinian society, the Palestinian BDS National Committee, or BNC. I understand there's been some BDS news about the United States movement for black lives and also the reaction to this by Jewish Voice for Peace. Uh, yes, uh, the, the Palestinian BDS uh, National Committee uh, um, warmly saluted and welcomed the, 
vision statement, the platform issued by the movement for black lives in the United States, uh, we see this as an empowering and liberating uh, statement of principles and of vision. And we committed to fully support our sisters and brothers in the movement in the U.S., uh, the movement for black lives, to achieve justice, to achieve freedom and liberation. Um, uh, we see very well the connections between Israel's regime of oppression and the U.S. Uh, uh, racial injustice, economic injustice, uh, um, and, and policies that criminalize, disenfranchise uh, people of color, especially younger people of color across the United States. Uh, many of the police forces that are suppressing and nonviolent demonstrations in black communities and Latino communities are trained by Israel. If Americans are wondering why suddenly their police forces look like uh, military SWAT teams, uh, that's the Israeli effect, actually, the Israeli impact in militarizing the police forces. So there's a lot of connection with Israeli companies involved in, in, in the war with Mexico, uh, uh, companies, international companies involved in the incarceration business in the U.S. are also involved in Israel's incarceration uh, uh, um, system where Palestinians are subjected to torture and, and it was it was also interesting that the the Jewish Voice for Peace organization hailed what the Black Lives Movement decided. Uh, absolutely, Jewish Voice for Peace, uh, which is the fastest growing uh, uh, Jewish community-based organization in the United States, and of course a, a, a member of the BDS network that we are very proud of that has played a very important role in uh, uh, leading some BDS campaigns across the United States, uh, has welcomed this uh, platform, this vision statement by the Movement for Black Lives, and fully endorsed it. Uh, and there was a lot of controversy about the platform's mention or description of Israel's regime as one of apartheid, not just occupation, and accusing Israel of committing acts of genocide against Palestinians, especially in the, in the occupied and besieged Gaza Strip. Uh, so uh, the, the support for this statement from Jewish Force for Peace, from other progressive Jewish groups uh, in the U.S. and across the world, is of uh, great import, of course. And uh, we, we see it as our role as well to stand with this statement and with the organizers in the movement for black lives to, to fend off those uh, opportunistic, even racist attacks against the movement by, by Israel lobby groups in the United States. I know you're busy and I just have two more points. Uh, one other interesting development is the labor board decision uh, in the United States where the electrical workers union uh, joined the BDS movement and it was challenged and then the labor board made a decision about this. Could you mention it? Uh, yes, following the, the historic decision by the United, by UE, United Electrical Workers, uh, to endorse the BDS call, making it the first, the largest national union in the United States to adopt the BDS call, um, Israel tried its best to suppress this move and to pressure the union to retract, but it failed. Ultimately, it resorted to legal warfare against United Electrical uh, by, by, by complaining, uh, by, by launching a legal complaint at, at, with the Labor Board, saying that this violates the guidelines and the rules and, and is discriminatory and so on and so forth. But that tactic failed as well and backfired. Well, this is very good. I just want to tell our listeners that promoting enduring peace has set up a freedom to travel committee to work on the issue of uh, the right of Palestinians like Omar Barghouti to travel. Now, just because he got a, uh, a lifting of, a two, uh, of the ban on his personal travel, that doesn't mean it won't be reinstated when the paperwork comes through. So this is a live issue. Those who are interested in working on it uh, can write to office at pepeace.org. Once again, that's office at pepeace.org. Well, well, thank you very much for talking to me. Thank you. Thank you. I, I really appreciate it, and I'm honored to receive the award.